is the iOS zero day real? This story and more on your weekly cybersecurity roundup. I'm Ali Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. Apple has claimed that iOS 26 is the most secure mobile operating system on the market. So to find a potential zero click exploit has been discovered less than three months after its release could be extremely concerning. iOS 26 was released by Apple in September 2025, which introduced the concept of memory integrity enforcement. It uses keys to help programs know when they're attempting to reach out of bounds memory that should not be allocated. The program will then kill off the bad acting access attempt. TechCrunch had several conversations with security researchers who described this technology as the most hack-proof technology on the market. We covered this in the September 15th episode of ThreatWire, which we've linked down below. But just months later, a new iOS zero day has hit the dark web market. This exploit claims to be a full chain zero click exploit taking advantage of the iOS 26 message parser. Its legitimacy remains unproven. The seller by the username ResearcherX claims that this new RCE is a memory corruption bug and is deployed by a malformed message payload that gets processed automatically. The vulnerability provides sandbox escape to move outside of the restricted processing environment and kernel level escalation to allow persistent root privileges. The seller also claims that it is highly hideable as it leaves no visible crash logs, prompts, or device alerts. Again, its legitimacy remains unproven. In October, Apple upped their bug bounty for zero-click attack chains to a maximum payout of $2 million, but dark web sale history says that these kinds of attacks can sell for anywhere from two to $5 million. We will have to wait and see what happens and if this is a legit iOS 26 zero-click attack chain. I have been waiting weeks to tell this story, but I haven't been able to spin it right. Finally, we have the right take. Advancement of AI has consistently been a major threat in the cybersecurity landscape, but just how far along are we? Anthropic claims that they've found the first ever almost completely AI automated campaign whose operations were almost 90% AI automated. The actual attack was reported by the team at Anthropic on November 13th, 2025. The team claims that the attack was carried out by a Chinese state-sponsored group targeting around 30 organizations. The security team at Anthropic has already began remediation with affected organizations. The threat actors operated in five phases. Phase one started off with a human inputting target information. This information would be passed to phase two, where MCP servers using Claude to maintain contacts would perform intelligence gathering and attack surface mapping. The threat actors operated in five phases. Phase one started off with a human inputting target information. This information would be passed to phase two, where MCP servers using Claude to maintain contacts would perform intelligence gathering and attack surface mapping. The information was then analyzed by a human and passed as context for the next phase. Phase three was automated vulnerability discovery, analysis, and development. The exploits found were reviewed by humans and then allowed to be autonomously executed and deployed. Internal systems were enumerated and important endpoints were discovered. These were then confirmed by a human review and allowed to be passed into Claude for context and orchestration. Phase four was the actual credential collection across targeted networks done completely through MCP servers and AI automation. The found credentials were reviewed by a human and passed as context back to Claude. Phase five was the collection phase and backdoor phase. Database structures were mapped, important user passwords and account information exfiltrated, and a persistent backdoor was created and put into relevant systems as needed. Humans intervened at the end by reviewing an AI-generated report and approved the final exfiltration targets. While I normally try to summarize attacks while trying to maintain a high level of technicalities, the actual report from the team at Anthropic was extremely vague, and I was not the only one in the community to believe this. The report received high skepticism from cybersecurity professionals across the world. Reading through the entire write-up leaves the reader with a lot more questions than answers. The issue with the report was how nebulous it really was. A lot of information was missing, down to not even including a list of indicators of compromise. 
This lack of details led to many cybersecurity professionals to write off the attack as a publicity stunt. So why cover this now? This report made it into the hands of the House Homeland Security Committee, and they've asked the Anthropic CEO to come to Congress to answer questions about this new alleged evolution in the cyber threat landscape. The CEO has been asked to speak to the committee on December 17th, 2025, so we can expect to hear more potential details about how this attack really happened then. Each week, major companies are hit with ransomware and affected by data breaches. In my personal opinion, these aren't full stories for what I like to cover on ThreatWire, but are trending. I figured it might be interesting to include them as a weekly roundup. The Code Red Alert security system used by US governments to deliver urgent event updates and news was hit by a data breach. Passwords are recommended to be changed ASAP. Korean Amazon competitor Coupang had a data breach of 33.7 million customer data. OpenAI had a customer data breach occur via their vendor mix panel. The French Football Federation disclosed a data breach of user information and is encouraging passwords to get rotated as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this little roundup, let me know in the comments. I think the most embarrassing thing I can do as a full-time backend software engineer is accidentally publish my credentials to prod or a public repo. I can't say it'll never happen to me, but I think given my interest in cybersecurity, it definitely would be very embarrassing to happen. It turns out that publishing credentials to public repos is still on the rise with no signs of stopping anytime soon. The security researcher Luke Marshall scanned every public GitLab repo and the results are not good. Using the Trufflehog tool, Luke Marshall scanned every possible GitLab repo 5.6 million cloud repos. The system was built out to use an AWS Lambda function tied to the AWS querying service. The entire system cost them around 770 US dollars and operated for just around 24 hours. The scans produced over 17,000 live secrets. The most commonly published secret was a GCP credential totaling 5,276 of the discovered secrets. Secrets were found in repos as old as 2010, with many of the secrets being found from repos created in the past five years. Via responsible disclosure, Luke was rewarded a payout of 9,000 USD for his findings. I'm still looking for a way for us to be able to vote on our favorite stories of the year, so definitely look out for that in future episodes. But I'm Allie Diamond. If you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending with Allie. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught. I am filming Threat Wire. I'm about to get brewski on a 30 day cycle of Doxy. Uh, Can I have cause, some? No, because he tested positive for Lyme disease and anaplasma. He has Lyme disease? Yeah, he's like, he's fine though. Uh, My son, no! I'm just, I, I, I got a message at 6 p.m. and I didn't. I didn't, uh, I didn't pick it up, and I called back. I've just been sitting here anxious for like an hour and a half, and I just talked to the doctor, and it'll be like 30 days, doxy, cheap. Uh, so. He has Lyme I was, disease. I was, I was stressing. Uh, he either has Lyme disease or had it previously. The test just shows that, like,